Good morning, everyone. Welcome back um, to, um, to the TRRC. And uh, before we start our proceedings, uh, this is the last day of the uh, ninth um, session. Uh, may I call on the uh, religious leaders to give us some um, prayers, please? Imam, you have the floor. Please go ahead. <laughs> إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن أصرع للمسلمين أصرع للذين ألم تأليهم غير المقدوب عليهم ولا الدالين وإن تستفتحوا فقد جاءكم الفتح نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل الله أحد الله سمى لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من صار ما خلق ومن صار غاشق إجابة ومن صار نفاثات في الأقد ومن صار حاسد إجابة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر وسواس الخناز الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين نما شكرا نما إمام سي بشوف يو هاف ذا فلو بليز شكرا شيرمان Lord God Almighty, whose throne is in the heavens above and whose footstool is upon the earth beneath, you who rule all things both in heaven and on earth, we continue to call upon your divine mercy for you to look kindly upon us as we continue to hear serious revelations of mishaps that have been taking place in this nation, of people who we are supposed to protect, but unfortunately use their human power to subdue and to molest and to maltreat the weak and the vulnerable. We do ask that the Holy Spirit will forgive all of these imperfections of humankind. That the Holy Spirit will touch the hearts of all human beings to know that the respect of one another extend to the fear of you who have created all mankind in your image, in your goodness, and in your likeness. As we continue to hear hurtful things, we continue to ask for patience in the hearts of those who have been hurt, in the hearts of families who have been affected, in the hearts of the populace and those that are in the diaspora. That it is only you who can grant solace to our problems. And it is only you who can pacify. 
and bring peace in the hearts of all humankind. And so we continue to submit ourselves under your direction. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much indeed, my Bishop Odeko. Uh, Council, before we proceed, we have a, a, an unusual visitor and uh, uh, who is very determined to <laughs> impose on our proceedings, and uh, that's uh, the cricket that you are hearing. It's going on like that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm determined that it would not interrupt our proceedings. I don't know how to talk to crickets, but <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best uh, but to make sure that uh, the proceedings are not, uh, are not interrupted. If you are ready with um, this morning's witness, let's go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, members of the audience. Horija uh, Balagay would lead the next witness. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning to you all. Um, can I ask that the witness be brought in? Thank you. I, Patrick Gallo, do swear that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Good morning, Ms. Jallo. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Welcome to the TRRC. Thank you very much for coming all the way here in order to testify before the commission. Sure. Before we start, there are a few things that I would like to highlight. Right. First of all, you know who I am, but yeah. for the record, I'll just state my name. Right. Haraja Balagay. So it is my role today to ask you questions on behalf of the commissioners. Right. At the end of my questions, the commissioners may ask additional questions and then you will be afforded an opportunity to give a final statement. Right. A few housekeeping matters as well. There is interpretation into the local languages. So while you and I will be speaking in English, please allow a few seconds between my speech and your response so that we avoid overlapping speech. At the same time, um, please also bear in mind that while interpretation is going on, it's difficult to interpret very long sentences. So um, take your time throughout your testimony and have short pauses in between your sentences to allow the interpretation to conclude before um, interpreting more of your statements. During your testimony, I'll ask you different types of questions such as how do you know something I might ask you further detail on what you've said. So if at any point my questions are unclear or you would like me to repeat them, please feel free to do so at any point. Sure. During your testimony, as much as possible, I will allow you to give a free narrative of what, what happened and what you know. 
I will um, interrupt you from time to time to ask additional questions, but I will do my best to make sure that those questions come before you move on to describe another situation or another event. Um, so I will ask a lot of my follow-up questions then, and then we'll move on to um, something else. For your testimony today, we have about eight topics to cover. Some topics are shorter than others, so don't be alarmed by how many topics there are. Right. We will begin with a brief introduction of who you are. Right. Um, we will talk about your personal details as well as your educational background. Right. Then we will talk about the preparations for the 22nd July pageant um, in 2014. Then we will talk about the competition itself, the 2014 competition. And then after that, we will talk about events that occurred post-pageant, um, post right? So we will talk about official meetings that you um, had with the president or at the office of the president or state house. Then we will talk about any private or unofficial meetings that you had with um, the president. We will then talk about your own victimization. Um, and then after that, we will talk about the events that occurred after, um, as well as then leading to your final decision to leave the Gambia, as well as the impact that this, has, this entire ordeal has had on you as a survivor of sexual violence. Um, do you understand the topics that I've outlined? I do. Are you ready to begin? Sure. So for the record, can you state your full name? Fatu Jallo. Are you known by any other name? Tufa Jallo. Tufa Jallo. Yeah. Can you tell us when and where you were born, Ms. Jallo? I was born in Jarosoma, um, Mansakonka Clinic in 1996. Can you tell us the exact date? 19th April. 19 April 1996. Yeah. Um, can you tell us currently where do you live? I live in Toronto, Canada. And what is your current profession? Um, I'm a student and also work in, um, in communications. Tell us what you're studying at the moment. I'm studying social work. Social work? Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your educational background? including um, dates, as far as you recall, <laughs> yeah. um, as well as the institutions where you attended school. Yeah, we went over this a thousand times, as I'm very bad with dates. But um, I started my education in 2000 in Kabafita Nursery School. Um, I was there from 2000 to 2003, and um, when it was time to start my primary school at grade one, I, at the time, decided to go to an Arabic school instead. Um, I had a brother that was sick, so I thought I would close earlier and I'll be able to take care of him. So I went to Sheikh Job Islamic School, which is in um, Barawulang, behind Brikama, and I was there from 2004 to 2008. And then I proceeded to go to Kabafita Upper Basis School. So I did not attend English primary school. Um, I tried to enroll in many schools, and I had to sit for an English and a maths test to get um, at least 80% to be able to get into an English school. And with studies and with mom and dad, I was able to get into Kabafita um, in the lowest class at the time because I did not have a background in any of the subjects in English. So I spent... You can just slow down oh. as you're speaking. Okay. Um, but yes, please continue. Okay. So I went to Kabafita from 2008 to 2011, um, from grade 7 to grade 9, and I became the head girl of Kabafita throughout my grade 9, and um, very active in drama, debates, and everything stage-related. Then I went to New Sweat Senior Secondary School from 2011 to 2014. And um, in September of that same year, I started to attend the Gambia College. I know from the outset you've mentioned that you're not very good with dates. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would just like to clarify, 
one issue um, regarding when you attended Sheikh Job yeah. Islamic School. Right. Um, I believe you said from 2004 to 2008. 2003 to 2008, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, you said you finished at Nusrat High School, and that would have been in 2014. Yes. And so that would have been grade 12. Yes. And thereafter, you started at the Gambia College yes. in September 2014. Yes. What were you studying at the Gambia College? Um, HTC. And what, what is that exactly? A higher teacher's certificate. You mentioned that the reason why you decided to go to Arabic school was you had a brother who was sick, and so it was um, a better choice, essentially, so you could take care of your brother. Um, what do you mean by that? What was, yeah, uh, what was wrong with your brother, and um, why was Arabic school a better option? Right. Um, so my brother was sick. He has a ADDH, I think that's what it's called and we finished nursery school together and he was getting worse by the day. Um, Mom was going to school at the time, um, suffering, it was between from her college to university and dad was also busy with work and uh, being the closest to my brother, we have only one year apart, we were pretty close and with English schooling it involves after studies it involves um, going for gardens and other extracurricular activities. But with the Arabic school, adding the fact that I was very enthusiastic about reading the Quran and I was fascinated by all that, it also closes around two and there's hardly ever extracurricular activities so I can get home earlier and I can either wash him off or go look for him if he goes missing in the neighborhood or make sure he eats. So I would spend the better half of the day with him because my mom was going to Carnifing for studies. So she would get home after eight or like nine in the evening. That was why that was convenient. So from a very young age, you were responsible for um, taking care of your brother. That's right? Mm, yeah, badly. Um, can you tell us um, when you started English school, um, what happened to your brother after that? So my dad decided to pay someone who would be at home to take care of him. So it was like a guard and then um, a helper. And that happened before I even chose to go to English school. So when I looked around again, I said, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do if I finish Arabic school. I don't want to be a teacher, an Arabic teacher. or So I want to work in an office at that age. or whatever um, concept I had about being an English student instead of an Arabic student. So I went to my dad and then I told him, oh, remember I said that I wanted to go to Arabic school? Yes, I have changed my mind now. I want to go back to English school. And he did not hesitate. He um, did let me try my chance. But yes, there was someone who was there now to take care of my brother and he was paid. So you said that one thing that you wanted to do was work in an office. Right. Um, and eventually in 2014, September, you started um, the higher teaching certificate course right. at the Gambia College. Right. At that time, you were 18 years old, is that correct? Yes. Can you tell us um, when was the first time you heard about the 22nd July pageant? I had the pageant earlier on, in around when it just started. I remember um, watching it in my older mom's, my dad's first wife's house with the rest of my siblings. And um, I saw students from the University of the Gambia. And um, I think it, it was either around the time that Face of Afisel happened. It was it before or after, I'm not sure, but it was around that time. And um, I thought it was great. I watched it. We would stay in the house until 3 in the morning because the so did went on for that long. And um, yeah, and I said I would do that if I get the chance to. And me and all of my sisters wanted to do that as it was a scholarship pageant.
And what were some of the, um, from watching the pageant, what were some of the things that drew you towards wanting to participate? You mentioned that it was a scholarship pageant, but was right. there anything else that um, piqued your interest, so to speak? The girls were brilliant. Um, these were girls that represented their various institutions in academia and also debates and drama and competitions and they represented the best of what um, any female student could be in this country and they were able to articulate themselves very well their talent displays were awesome I could remember uh, the poetry I could remember the um, um, the drama scenes. I could also remember the singing and all these different talents. So it was a very um, empowering sight to see. And all these women had platforms on different issues about early um, teenage pregnancy, about HIV and AIDS, about um, FGM, about going back to the farm. And so there were topics that were of interest to national development and that was also a driving force but most importantly is the concept was at least how I saw it was oh you're great and you're good and you're the best of what we can take from your institutions to say and we give you a platform and you tell us what you want to do and then we further your education we further whatever it is that you want to do so that that was the driving force, yeah. So essentially you saw it as an opportunity um, to further your interest as well as um, education? Yes. Did you know any of the people who had participated um, in any of the pageants, any of the previous contest contestants? Um, I know about a few up close, but my sister at the time, who's way older than me, there's a huge age gap. Um, most of her friends from either Newsred at the time or either from the organizations that she was in, whether it was NAPSA and all of that, I saw them there and I did sometimes used to see them come visit my sister at home. So I was familiar with their faces. And um, about four to five of them that I've seen the rest, not so much. I lived in Brikama, and we hardly, I hardly came to come to the combos. Um, but they really represented whatever institution they were coming from, and they were really portrayed as the face of that institution or school or tertiary. Yeah. Do you hear anything about what happened to any of the contestants in terms of? Um, what they gained from the pageant, as far as you were able to tell? Um, not face to face or what of mouth. It was right in the advertisements that were on GRTS, whether the Minister of Education at the time talking or they also clips of the past pageant. And it's that this is a scholarship program, and there have been people that get to go and study up to PhD level. And um, all of that is taken care of. You choose whatever school you want to go to. And these people, some of them have even come back to the country to serve in various positions. And I think whatever else I heard from people was just a reiteration of what the advertisements were sowing. So, but it wasn't anyone that I know of that participated that ever engaged me as to what they got or what their benefits were. Did you eventually participate in um, this 22nd July pageant? Yes, I did. Um, between the November, November and December, but I would say November of 2014. Can you tell us what led to your participation? Like what, well, you've told us what motivated you to have interest in the pageant, right. but what actually led to, your proce um, to the process of you putting yourself forward as a contestant? Right. So, to, to put it in context here, when I finished um, high school, um, more of an English, lit written and literature kind of a student, I've always been 
very bad at maths, still very bad at maths. So I did not get the credit score on maths to go to the university. So in between, my going to college was a hassle. My mom and my dad had to sit me down for days because I thought I, I don't want to go to Gambia College. I want to go to a university or I would rather sit home. And she just kind of pointed out, oh, it's just for the main time. Instead of sitting home, just go. And at least there's something you're doing. And then you can sit for the private exams for maths, which I still told her that I will still not pass. But <laughs> again, perspective. And so when I was going to Gambia College, when I started, it was really me waking up every day, going there, but saying that I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. So I, w I was really thinking about other things, about um, Ibunja Tiata was a huge interest for me to go and do stage performance and drumming and play books. I had at this point forgotten about um, to miss July 22nd, or if not forget it, it wasn't in my present moment because we, were, we didn't have GRTS at the house when we moved because my mom had moved out of the main compound, so I wasn't following up anymore. But I met girls who were at the college at the time who met with me after I was presenting in an English class and they told me, hey, would you, you should represent us at the Miss July 22nd. We have this coming up. The Gambia College has never won, and I think you would be a great representative. And I said, oh, that's still going on. She's like, yes. Then she's like, oh, you don't have to do anything. Just give me your name, and I will drop it off at Mrs. Carlos, who was, the, um, who was training us at the tertiary school level. Um, so that is how it was reintroduced to me, and that is how my name was put into the ballot to participate to represent the Gambia College. So at that point, if I understand you correctly, rehearsals or um, activities had already begun? Um, no, it hasn't at this point. Okay. Yes, but at other, other people, most people have already put in their names, but they did not have someone from the School of Education. So they had someone from um, Nosin in Banjul, they had one from the School of Agriculture, and all the other departments, but they didn't have one for School of Education. Um, so when I put my name in, that is when rehearsal started, but I did not go to the rehearsals that followed. I forgot about it again, yeah. Um, you mentioned, uh, Miss, is it Carlos or? Madame Carlos. Madame Carlos. Yes. Who was responsible for training? Training, yeah. What kind of training are you referring to? Um, with our platforms and also with etiquettes, table etiquettes. I remember we went to the lunch room of the college and how to use a fork and a knife. Uh, she was a very sweet uh, but very strict lady and also on stage presence and how to present an idea. Basically everything surrounding pageantry, yeah. So when you talk about rehearsals, is this what you're referring to as well, or was there something different about those rehearsals? This is part of it. We will basically do it in a classroom that was available in the college. And how long did um, your rehearsals take? I came in after they've already had like three. It all happened in a very short span. Um, November? Yeah, but it all happened in a very short span. And I came in on the fourth rehearsal, and that is because I met this same group of girls again. Like, oh, we have not been in Wolof. We have not been seeing you. Uh, come around, the rehearsals have started. I said, oh, I forgot. Is it going on? They said, today at 4, and we are going there, because I was already heading home, get, coming out of the campus. And then I followed them, and then we went in there. That was the first day I met some of the girls that were also there to compete. And I met Madame Carlos, too, there on that day. And um, that's when I started my rehearsals. 
So we did this for not long. I can't remember the exact number of times that we rehearsed before the preliminary rounds. So can you tell us um, how you became the person who was selected to actually represent um, Gambia College? Um, what, was, um, what was the process? Was there some kind of um, judgment type criteria? Was there a mini pageant, for instance? And also, were you the only one who was selected? So there was a mini pageant, which was called the preliminary rounds, again, because I joined the um, rehearsals at a very latter date. It was almost the day of the competition. Um, I remember coming home and running to Sarah Kunda Market because I did not have a dress to wear. I pulled my mom's shoes because we wear the same size. And um, I went with a friend of mine, a very, she was at the college, she's part of the girls who's introduced me to this. We went to Sarah Kunda to this guy who sell dresses second hands. Um, his name is Chat, but he's a very popular dress seller in Saracunda. So we went there. I had five hundred dalasi on me. We went. We looked at the dresses. I picked one black one, and it had a slash in the front on the side. And the dress was about eight hundred instead. So my friend helped and pitched in. I bought that dress quickly. It didn't even fit me well. It was very tight. But I ran with it home, and then I started to look for cultural material. I, drab, I grabbed my mom's lippy dress, which is a fuller traditional dress that she had, and looked for a hair tie for it, and came up with a concept quickly that I would like to do. So my mom came home that evening, and I told her, oh, so we have this competition tomorrow that I am going to. It's just the college rounds, and anybody who wins goes to the Miss July 22nd. Now, the, the, the perspective here is my mom is so used to hearing me go to competitions, go to debates, that it got to a point it's just like, okay, okay, because I do it almost every week, all the time, and steal all her clothes, basically. But that happened. I grabbed a dress. The next day was the competition. Some of my siblings came, and we went to the Gambia College. And all the... All the different schools participated. So from the School of Education, that's where the two winners came. I was not the winner. I was the second um, to the winner. So another girl took first, and I took second. And yes, there were judges, both from the college level and also a representative from the Ministry of Education on the, whichever department was responsible was also present there. And they were judging on um, how clear you were in speaking, your platform, your talent display, and um, um, also in how you relate to the rest of the girls. In the beginning of the competition, we had a group dance where we wore a t-shirt and we had a coordinated dance that we have been rehearsing. Then we go into the cultural aspect where you introduce yourself in your tribal dress and then to the evening gown, and then your talent, and also to talk about your platform, what you will do as a winner of this. So yes, two of us now were to go and represent the Gambia College at the national level. So before we move on, what was your platform and what was your talent? I do not remember my platform for Gambia College preliminary rounds, but my talent was um, one-man drama display of um, poverty, trying to alleviate poverty. So I could remember wearing um, bad clothing or clothes that were all torn up to signify poverty. And underneath that, I had a um, mini flag of the Gambia, Gambia, Nas uh, Gambia national flag. And it was me pres uh, presenting myself as poverty and then it was a fight between Gambia and poverty, and then I strip off the poverty presentation of clothes, and then the flag came out, and the flag was talking to poverty that I'm going to strike you, I'm going to do this to you, you're not going to win, and all that. So that was the concept of my preparation. Sounds very creative. I think so, too. <laughs> So after that, you were one of the two winners um, from the preliminary round. Yeah. 
and then you went to the national stage, yes. which was the Miss 22nd July yes. um, competition. Can you tell us about the preparations for the competition once you got to that national platform? So I came home that night and with the siblings and everybody was screaming and my mom said, what happened? I said, okay, I think it got a little bit more serious now. So we were told that we will be leaving in a hotel for a couple of weeks or a week, I'm not sure of the date span, before the competition to prepare us. And we are going to be there with the other girls and the ones who are supposed to help us. And our families are not um, allowed access in there. But the reasons given for that was because they do not want um, parents who take it seriously to come there and bring jujus for their kids to help them win or to come in there and help their kids with write-ins and their platforms. They wanted it to be done by us. At least that's, that's what was said. Um, so the preparations included me finding um, clothes that I'll be wearing in that um, time space. It also included me thinking about what my talent would be because when I am in the hotel, I do not have access to the outside or to go get anything. So I had to get all of that under preparations. And um, to braid my hair, to have a wig on, and that was mostly it. But I spent most of my time with the talent part of it. I went to a fuller guy who's a um, griot in Farato to learn how to play the traditional Fulariti because I wanted to do the same act that I did with poverty and Gambia fighting but with the um, display of a traditional instrument. So I remember coming to my mom begging her to pay for this guy that I wanted to learn to play the Riti and I did play, pay him and I had few classes with him and I borrowed his Riti because I didn't want to buy one but I spent most of my time doing that. And then a boss came, the Gambia College students were happy, and uh, me and the girl who won, we came in a big bus, they picked me up from my home, there were celebrations, and Gambia College is gonna bring the win home this time around. We went to Madame Carlos to say bye, we picked up the other girl, and then we went to Paradise Hotel. And when we got in, we all got off, and there were other cars too that brought other girls, so from Gambia High to um, the University of the Gambia was represented, MDI was represented, GTTI, and, and also senior secondary school uh, st girls were also represented. So we came with our bags and we all start, sat in the lobby of Paradise Suites Hotel. And uh, we introduced ourselves, not, um, Nakanga Dev, what's your name? How are you? Oh, you're from college, you're from this. So we familiarized ourselves there. And then I met Auntie Tida from the gender department from Ministry of Education, and also um, Auntie Aisha and um, Auntie Ida, and a couple of other people. And then we were given rooms, and in each room it was two of us that were in the room. I remember I was in the room with um, a girl from the University of the Gambia as well, a fuller girl, and we were in two, two, twos in rooms. Yeah. Do you remember how big how big the group was? I would say about twenty-two. Not specific, yeah. You mentioned Auntie Tida, Auntie Aisha, and Auntie Ida. Yes. You mentioned that Auntie Tida was from the gender department of the Ministry of Education. Yeah. Were the other two, Auntie Aisha and Auntie Ida, from the same? I know Auntie Aisha is also. I'm not sure what department Auntie Ida was. Um. Do you know their last names? Um, I know Auntie Tida Jata. Mm -hmm. The rest I would not guess. Uh, it's not coming to me right now. After you familiarized yourself with each other, introduced um, yourselves to each other, were you given any kind of briefing on that day about what to expect or um, what would happen during your time there? Right. Um, I do not remember the specific details. 
I think we were asked to go to our room straight to put our bags down and then we will meet back down at a specific time. And then we did. I can't remember if we had the conversation of this is the time you're going to have your breakfast, this, um, people are going to come in that are going to train you on various things and you should start working on your platform. I know that happened at some point. I'm not sure if it happened on the exact day that we got there or the day after we got there. Yeah. You told us that you stayed at Paradise Suites Hotel for about a week or two. Yeah. Can you tell us what was going on during that time? Um, they were very protective of us. Um, male drivers were not allowed to come in to our premises. Um, we had where you have lunch and breakfast. We had a specific time to have breakfast. We had lunch and then we had dinner. And um, the setup was in the morning they hired or they got someone who was for physical training. Uh, she would come in every morning and we would walk down to the beach to run, to exercise, to meditate. And then in the afternoons, we would walk on our platforms, write them down. And at the same time, too, GRTS at some point was there because they were supposed to shoot a short film to advertise the upcoming pageant and um, also take pictures of us. So a makeup artist was sent in who came and will do all of our makeups. And uh, we did this video thing and pictures were taken of us for them to take. So we did that. And within that time too, we had a lady, a Gambian lady too, who was brought in to help us with catwalk. And in the evening, we will move to the other side of Paradise Suites Hotel where you have the hall, but that empty space. And we would rehearse how to go down, back, back and forth, how to balance yourself, how to put on the heels. And uh, we would also go to measure our clothes because we were supposed to wear, uh, we wore our evening dresses who were sewn by a tailor. Um, and also, yeah, but in the evenings mostly, you have all these people and each person you write down your platform you take it to them they edit it they're like change this add this put this and then we also rehearsed our group dance that you do at the beginning which takes a long time because everyone has to be in line but most of the time the atmosphere there was like really good it was like a girls camping especially for me and um I'm very introverted sometimes. It's only when I'm in public I am kind of extroverted. But I will always go back to my corner because I was very focused on the talent part of it to get my Riti right. And I was a bit worried because I did not have the actual Riti with me at the time. Um, but the atmosphere overall was great. I was not um, having a click or a group routine, but it was a girls' camp atmosphere. During that one or two week period, did they provide any information about what you could expect um, in terms of the competition itself, but also after the competition, um, what you could expect as a participant, um, a contestant at the time, but also if you were to win, right. what could you expect? Conversations were ongoing almost at every dinner or in the evening. The expectation was the winner, of course, is going to get a scholarship. And in terms of what the president could gift, there wasn't a specific gift, a specific amount. It all depended on him. That was kind of clear when it comes to extra stuff or gifts that you're going to get apart from the scholarship, right? And that he give the scholarships that was also made very clear um, the other conversations we had was basically the whole routine of the July uh, 22nd pageant who's gonna be there the ministers that are gonna be there um, we were advised not to be nervous you know to walk on our stage presence don't get frightened um, 
and as time went on too, they were very clear about don't go talk to the drivers, don't interact with the guys at the door. Um, but yes, they did give us a general perspective of what to expect, but that it also somehow depended on um, if you win. And if you win too, the Ministry of Education works towards your scholarship. You might get it, you might not get it. It also depends. Yeah. And when they talked about scholarships, um, you said it would depend on the president, and in some instances, the ministry would also work towards um, assisting with scholarships. Right. What did you understand? Were they referring to scholarships in country or scholarships abroad? What was your understanding at that point? Um, the, the ones that were in tertiary institutions, the idea was they do apply for schools abroad and um, it is paid for, especially the winners of the competition. And for those that are going to high school at the time, might be paid for by the Ministry of Education here in the country. And so considering that you were at college at the time, at the Gambia College, um, the fact that you could have a scholarship abroad um, must have been something that incentivized you to really do well during the competition. Yes, that was the main, again, as I said earlier, I did not want to be at the college. And so for me, I've, before I even joined the competition, I've applied for schools. I've got accepted into two schools. I've applied for flight schools. Almost, I was just uh, on the internet applying. So for me, that's what I really wanted to do, to leave the country and go and study. And because it was really established that it is talent-based, because it's an academic scholarship, that what you display and your platform was really important to get in the scholarship. So me, and I believe the rest of the girls, really gave it their all, like, in participating. Yeah. But from that moment, you knew that getting a scholarship abroad depended on the president. <coughs> yes. So after the one or two week period that you spent at Paradise Suites Hotel, um, let's move on to the actual competition itself and what happened. Um, please give us an idea of um, what took place on the day of the competition. Um. On the day of the competition, I remember in the morning, I was um, pleading with Auntie Tida that I know our parents are not supposed to come here, but I needed my Riti to perform. And we didn't have, I was um, given access to like call, they did it. And I told Auntie Tida, please do call my mom to bring the Riti. I don't need to see her, she can deliver it here. So my mom did that that morning, I got my Riti. The morning atmosphere was more of nervousness. Everyone was nervous and filled with anxiety. But towards the competition in the evening, the, f um, the hall started to get filled. There's a backstage where we prepared and we had our clothes for both evening wear, traditional, and also um, the dance we are supposed to do. All schools came, the Gambia College were there to support, all these other institutions and schools were also there. And you have a front row where you had ministers, ranging from Minister Fatul Amin Fai to um, all the other ones were there. And right behind them was the former pageant who won, and then the one that won for senior secondary school was also sitting there and then other people, and then to the left, yeah, there, was the, there were the judges. Some of the judges were former contestants in the pageant as well. Um, so the stage was set, we were ready, we came out, did the dance, same routine again, did uh, our presentation platform, did the talent display, and uh, everyone did the same thing. It was a long night of that. And towards the end of it, the winners were announced, and we were given gifts on the stage. I can remember, what I remember is clothing from Ida's idea, um, and a basket of some stuff in it, yeah. So we know that 22 of you um, contested for this. 
you said at the end of the night, the winners were announced. Right. So who were the winners and for what categories? Um, so I was the winner for Tashiri in Institution. And um, there was a winner for high school. There was a second runner-up, a third runner-up. And um, there was Miss Photogenic. Uh, Miss Congeniality and uh, other categories of Miss, but about, yeah. Do you remember the names of any of the other winners? Yes, I do remember the, the names. So it was me, Fotashiri, the winner for the high school was um, Awajame. The winner for Miss Photogenic was Fatum Benga. The second runner-up was Fanambo of the UTG in tertiary category, and uh, followed by Halimatu Ba of either MDI, yeah, MDI, and um, Miss Congeniality was Safia Tobalde. Um, I, I can't remember, like I remember the names, but I don't remember what category they won. Yeah. So you said after the winners were announced, you were given gifts while you were on stage. On the stage, yeah. You mentioned clothing from Ida, Ida's Ideas, correct? Ida's Idea and another tailor, another popular one around the area, I can't remember her name. Um, you mentioned something else. Um, what kind of other gifts did you receive? I don't remember the details of it, but I know it's a basket and it has flowers in it. But I, I, I don't remember what was in it. So after the competition, um, can you tell us what happened? What, um, what kind of activities took place as a result of um, in your case, having won Miss Tertiary Education, what were some of the activities or some of the expectations um, that you were expected to fulfill? Right. Um, so at this point, we are into we are into early weeks of December of 2014. In fact, let me ask a specific question before right. that. Right. Do you recall the date of the competition in 2014? Um. No, 21st to 22nd of November, around that time, but yeah. Please proceed. Right. Um, so when we finished that night of the competition, we didn't get to meet or regroup or talk about anything. It was very chaotic and celebration, so we all headed home. And uh, there were congratulatory messages coming in. Um, after that, we didn't meet to talk about what is going to happen now as a group. But it was wait, so we are waiting. So there wasn't a point to say that there's a process that's supposed to happen at the Ministry of Education that we are supposed to go to and meet and discuss what's supposed to happen at the ministerial level or at the department that was responsible. It was that we were waiting for a courtesy call from the president. So this went on, we are into December, and um, normally he would um, meet with the group early on, immediately when it happens. Ours took longer, and um, so I started to get involved in um, filming and in, in, um, movies. And there was this one that I opted for with a director called Femi at the time, with uh, Monica in it, and there was a, uh, yeah. Um, but before that, right. did you have any interactions with the Ministry of Education? Were you required to do anything else after the competition? Immediately, no. Um, we didn't talk about what was supposed to be done or myth to talk about any of that that happened after the courtesy call. So I assume that photographs were taken of you during the actual competition. Um, are you talking about the full-length photographs? 
where, well, that's what I'm trying to drive at. Were any photographs taken after the competition? It was after the competition, but after the courtesy call, not in between. Okay, so yeah. let's take it step by step. Um, tell us about the um, director, Femi, who was shooting... Um, yeah, a movie called... A movie. Yeah, the Tama and the Daga, or the Tama and something. Um, so I was involved in that, and I was shooting for that. So the first time I got a call towards that was on that day. I was at the movie set um, somewhere around Senegambia with the director and um, with Monica. And then I received a call from the Separan at the time, who was also with us the whole time in Paradise. And then she told me that there is an event at the State House, and the president is being awarded with a certificate of Food, food self-sufficient Pan-African something from an organization outside of the Gambia. And that is being celebrated and we are supposed to be there. I was already in my attire for the scene, so I told her that I will not be able to come for that event. She said, but this is like the first event. I said, I know, but I really cannot come. And then I, we fin that was where we cut off the conversation, yeah. Um, what is the name of the chaperone that you're talking about? It's okay, I can say the names, right? Okay, yes. Aisa, that is Auntie Aisha. So, representative of the gender unit of yeah. the Ministry of Education. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, please continue. What happened after that phone call? A um, few minutes after that phone call, then I received a call from Jimbe. So, um, I guess at this point, Aisa has related back to her or whoever made the call to let them know that we are supposed to go. And she called me and I pick up, and it was with a no caller ID. And then she told me that I have to come. This is an event that I have to come to. Um, wearing the crown comes with responsibilities, and all the girls being there and I'm not being there doesn't look good. And I told her, at that time that I was menstruating, which was a lie, and that I had stomach cramps and I cannot come. So when she hung up, I think she called back again at the office, yeah. Did you know who she was when she called you? No, I didn't. Um, so you hadn't met her before that first phone call? No, I have never met her. Did she introduce herself? No, she so just said that I'm calling from the protocol office. And you said she called with a no caller ID, so yes. an unknown number? Yes. And did she say how she got your number, for instance? No. So after that phone call, what happened? Um, I'm assuming she called back to the office, or um, the gender department, to say that I do have to come. So here, I should have clarified with my mom what happened. But because my mom also works at the Ministry of Education, but on the curriculum on, or another department, um, a colleague who heard that I'm insisting to come, and when Jimby called, or whichever protocol called, apart from the one who called me, was insisting that I have to come to the State House for this event. Um, my mom called me. She was there with an auntie of mine who works at the ministry called Auntie Jabate. Uh, she called and said, in Mandinka, like you've been called, just go. And I told my mom, I cannot go. I am right in this scene. Like this is a lifetime opportunity. There are so many other events that are going to happen. I already told them that I have cramps. And um, she said to me, but they're going to come for you anyway. So you know, where are you? So I told my mom where I was. And I was there. An hour later, my mom came in driving with that Auntie Jabate. And then they got off the car. And she said, they've been calling me. They've been coming to my office. I, I, Auntie Isa is saying that they're bothering her. They're calling her and saying, that you have to come. Um, so Manika and the director engaged my mom, like, what's happening? And my mom explained, and Auntie Jabate, to be specific, was more um, understanding of the situation that, okay, manghani ni mola, just go. So Femi, too, even though very disappointed, had to call in another actress 
I think her last name is Mboj for her to come in and had to ask her and because we are a different size in clothing they had to rush to the tailor to um, fix up the shirt and I because I wasn't ready to go I wasn't on my way I did not have my sachet I didn't have my crown and I didn't have a dress on so Auntie Kedi Jobate decided she would go to Yundum and grab my dress and my um, crown and uh, my mom will drive me to Banjul and we will meet at the entrance and I can change my clothes. And that's what we did. Um, I was late because they were already well into the program. Yeah. You mentioned a Monica. Yeah. And you mentioned that um, the director Femi, who, who's Monica? Monica Davis, she's an actress, she's a Gambian actress. And do you recall the date of this particular event that you're talking about? No. But it was somewhere in December? Yeah. Do you remember if it was the beginning or end of December? Um, Mid-December, maybe? Okay. Yeah. So you were called to go to State House um, right. for official meeting, essentially, um, right. because the president was getting an award. Right. At that point, you realized you couldn't say no, so you had to go, but you didn't have any clothes with you, and you're supposed to change when you arrived in Banjul. Right. So tell us what happened when you arrived. Um, I was waiting in the car with my mom. We waited for Auntie Khadija to come, and then she came. I changed in the car, and then I got off. I went to the entrance. My mom and Auntie Khadija went back to the office. And when I came, I was asked to, uh, I was still on the phone, I called Auntie Aisha, and then she asked um, Jimby at the time, who I didn't know. And um, a protocol call, um, Aisha Barry was asked to come and pick me up at the gate. So I went through security, they scanned my bag, and when I came out of the scanning area, Aisha Barry was there, and then she sold me my seat. When I came, all the girls were already there. So I took my seat there like, dang a late blue hair, what was going on? Because I had said that I wasn't coming in the beginning because I had stomach cramps, I still maintained that story. I said, oh, do that a small bit more more bugana ray and you know, I'm a first set of kinyo. Um, so I sat I there. I think you have to um, interpret that for some of the non Wolof speakers. Dama forsenyo means I just forced myself to come. Yes. Right. Um, so I took my seat and the event started. And all the normal proceedings and praises and the food self-sufficiency of Gambia was at the top of it and congratulations and but I can vividly remember Balagaba Jahumpa on that day. And uh, then the president came, of course, before all of this, and we all stood up. That was the first time I actually saw him um, up close, not that close, but at least that much closer. And then the event finished, they wrapped up, and Jimby, who was throughout the time walking around the place, she came there and she's like, my name is Jimbe, and the president will meet you guys briefly. Um, this is not an official meeting, but he will just want to meet you briefly because he should have met you earlier, but because of circumstances, that's why. And we said, okay. And we were all excited at the time, you know, like, yay, and you know. Um, but she said that we had to wait because he's going to pray. They got off the main VIP lounge, they walk into the mosque of State House, and then we were taken into an office on the side, but the office waiting area where you had big couches in the area. So we all sat there and waited for the president to finish um, praying. So during the ceremony that had just taken place, did you have any role as um, winners or former contestants? Did you have any role to play at all during that ceremony? We were enjoying theatrics. We were just sitting there and copying every word Balagaba Jahumba says, really. We didn't have any official 
function that we were supposed to do or usher anything. We were sitting there the whole time. You told us that some of the participants, well, the other contestants, I should say, came from different schools around the country. Um, and you were 22 in number. If you got that call at the last minute on that same day to attend the event, right. um, did all 22 show up? No, there were mostly two that hardly shows up in events because one lived in um, Basse and one was going to Armitage. She, repre she represented Armitage. So they were mostly not there unless they, it finds them in combo at the time. So on that particular occasion, were you about 20 or were you less than that? Um, no, so 22 participated in the main event but my, then you have the winners. So when we are going to the events, it was the winners that went. So it's way less than 22 because the others were dropped out. So about like 10 of us now, if you count everyone who's a winner. So out of that 10, let's say two would be missing or one because they couldn't make it to the combos. So after this, you were told that um, you would meet the president and you were moved to a different different room. Right. Um, can you tell us what happened next? Um, we were waiting there and then Jimby joined us and introduced herself and be like, yo, yeah, and then recognized us from their competition. Yo, you were this, you were that. There was a little chat here and there between all of us. Um, and then the president had come a few minutes after that. And then we went into an office, but it's the round table where mostly most of the events are, f are shown on GRTS. That's where we went, and he sat in his normal place where he sits, like right here. And then I was sitting here starting from me. Um, Aisha, Auntie Aisha was there, and uh, on the other side were the other girls as well. So he greeted us, and hi, and there were so many jokes being made. And then he did ask me, you're the one whose stomach is hurting you, you know, full as you're always scared of every little thing. And then I agreed and I, I confirmed that yes, my stomach was hurting me, that's why I did not come earlier. Um, so he talked about that he has watched the pageant and that we did really good, that this is a good badge and that all of us deserved our win and he's very proud of us and that this is not an official meeting and he's going to meet us officially with the rest of the ministers and um, yes so now because I said my stomach was hurting me he the president decided to offer a bottle of um, medicine that was brought to him and it was black water that he shaked and said that this is really good for menstrual cramps. And I told him that I'm very bad with medicine. He's like, in Wolof, right? Nana Lee, drink this. It will actually help. It's really good. So he had a cup, a plastic cup, white one, where he poured it and I drank. And I remember at the time, one of the girls said that I have this constant headache as well that she always has. And then the president said, the medicine also works for that. So, you know, you can drink it. So we all ended up drinking that medicine in cups because everyone got sick. And um, he said, it's really good. And he asked us, are you feeling any changes? I think I said, yes. <laughs> but, yeah. And I actually didn't, but I did at the time. Um, so he didn't only stop there, but he gave me the bottle to take home that if I keep drinking it, it is not only going to stop my menstrual cramps from right now, but for all future um, menstrual cramps. So I took the bottle and then he gave me $50,000 and gave the winner of the senior second, the two winners. He also gave the other girls, but I do not remember the exact amount because sometimes it varies. Um, so that's what happened and then he got up, he left the room and then the rest of us also came out and there were cars that took each of us to our homes. Yeah. 
just a couple of follow-up questions. Right. You mentioned the contestant who got up, um, well, winner, right? The winner who got up and said she had she had a headache. Do you remember who that was? Um, she was Miss something. I can't remember. Am I, can I say her name? Um, um, Mbo was her last name. Mbo was her last name. I'm trying to click the name right now. You said that um, the president gave you fifty thousand dollars. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure the name will come back yeah, to yeah. you. So, gave you fifty thousand dollars. Right. And then gave the other winner fifty thousand dollars. Is right. that correct? Right. You mentioned some of the things that the president said to you at the time. Um, do you recall anything else that he said prior to giving you this medicine? Because it sounded like he was um, encouraging the group and giving advice. Yes. So um, what else did he say, as far as you recall? Some of them are as repetitive as the courtesy call. So, but it was mostly centered around us being, taking our education seriously, and also not let this win get to our heads, you know, that we will start going around and not being humble, I guess. But it was a general advice on us being, um, taking this seriously and concentrating on our school. Did he say anything about marriage or um, men in any, any way? That's what I'm talking about. That's the concept that we should be serious and focus on our education. Yeah. When he was giving you this advice as well as encouragement, how did you feel at that point? I felt that he cared and um, that it was a timely advice because a lot of people, regardless of what pageantry is or under what it is organized, a lot of people try to sexualize pageants or women on stage in general. So I thought it was a great advice for us not to kind of fall for that. Yeah, so I felt like it was um, a responsible advice to give. You mentioned the black liquid that you were given, um, right. the liquid that cures menstrual cramps as well as headaches. Right. Um, when you drank it, could you tell what, what it, was, um, what it consistent, consisted of? No, it just looked like charcoal, and, but it didn't have a specific taste for me to be able to say this is what it is. I really don't know. But when he asked if um, you were all feeling better, you said yes. I remember saying yes and other people, but I don't know who from who, but I remember saying mm-hmm, yeah. What made you say yes? I don't know. I think it's just instincts in the moment. I don't know. I really don't know, but I said that. I wouldn't say that I thought I was scared not to say yes, but instinctively is because he is promoting this medicine so well that it's going to cure future cramps with so much certainty. Me say no did not kind of side with that or, yeah. I just said mm -hmm. it was easier to say mm -hmm than to say no because then he will ask me, why, Hannah, you know medicine more than me, and I couldn't have that conversation. And he said it would cure future cramps. Yes. Did it, in fact, do that? I still cramped to death, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. You mentioned um, Jimbe. Did you know her last name? Um, Jame. Jame. Yeah. So after this um, encounter, so the first interaction that you had with the president as a right. group, right. Um, can you tell us what happened next? You left State House, presumably as a group. Yes. Yeah, and then we, we went home. Uh, it was a bit late, but we got home and that was that. And now we are waiting for the official the courtesy call. Um, so life went on. I was going to college. I did not really interact with the rest of the girls because I was the farthest in um, Yundum, and everyone else was like in the combos closer. So yeah. apart from the two 
um, other winners who were at Amitage and somewhere yes. else. Yes, rather. Right. So you didn't interact with them much. Um, we're still looking at mid-December 2014. Um, or thereabouts. Thereabouts. So did yeah. anything else happen in December? In December, we had the courtesy call. Um, we, were, we had to go and stay at a hotel again for a day before... Um, we met him because we had to sew asobis. There is this cloth that we all had to match, and that was being sewn and it was brought in. And Auntie Tida was also there. She came, and she was advising us on um, how to be in the presence of diplomats. I guess that we should behave, that we should not um, over exaggerate or be all over the place, and that um, we should be. Um, careful of like what we say in there because you don't know what is being recorded or what is not. Um, so that happened before we had the courtesy call and then the courtesy call happened. Whilst we were at the hotel, um, I remember Fanambo of UTG, um, she kind of brought, taught about a song that we should sing and um, we all kind of rehearsed it for all of us to get familiar with it so that when we go, we will all stand up and sing that song, which we were also busy rehearsing at before the meeting. Um, I remember parts of the song, I guess. I'm not going to ask you to sing it, don't Great. worry. Right. Um, so what happened after that? Did you, you said that you were taken to a hotel. Yes. And that was for two days. Yes, before, before the courtesy call. At this point, were you still going to school or had you already um, stopped for the Christmas holiday? Um, I'm not sure if we have stopped, but what I know is between this time and subsequent times to come, I was missing a lot of days in school whenever we are to have any of these events or let's say later on in February for the whole independence celebration, or if we had to go to Kanilai, um, I wouldn't be at the college those days. I remember the headmistress of college um, calling my mom, or they met at some conference, and she told my mom, Lujotsu in Dombi, like what is wrong with our daughter? I, she misses days in school. And um, I, my mom came to me and she said, oh, the headmistress, notices that you miss days in school. I said, did you tell her that we go for events and all this usher? My mom said I didn't, but um, yeah, that was a concern she raised. So I was missing days on actual school days. So let me get this straight. Right. This was a scholarship pageant with yes. emphasis on education and school. Right. You met the president who again reiterated the importance of going to school. Right. However, your responsibilities as a winner meant that you had to miss a lot of school because you had to attend a lot of events. Yes. Okay. You said that at some point you had the actual courtesy, um, courtesy meeting with the president. Right. So this was after you had spent two days at a hotel. Yes. Um, and received advice about how to comport yourselves um, in the presence of diplomats. Um, tell us what happened at that um, courtesy meeting. Where was it and um, what happened? It, ha it took place at the State House in Banjul. And um, on one side of that long table, that popular same table, was us, the girls. And on the other side was ministers from the vice president of the country at the time, um, minister of education at the time, to other ministers that were there. And then the president was also there. GRTS was also present, so it was filmed on national TV. And um, um, it went on with minister spoke, the vice president spoke, and she was talking about how she's amazed at the 
talent that we display that the f Gambia has a future and hope and he, she hopes that we take advantage of this opportunity and study and take our studies seriously. The um, Minister of Education went on around about the same. Some of the ministers spoke. I spoke on behalf of the girls and I remember um, thanking him for empowering women. I remember thanking him for um, giving us an opportunity for a lifetime and that we will take this opportunity and we will run with it and we will make the best of this opportunity. And what a great experience it has been to be part of this whole um, thing and how I am inspired that we do have a female vice president. So somewhere around that and then the person who had the last floor um, was the president himself and um, he went on again about advice on not just jumping into marriages and also concentrating on our schools and also um, developing our skills and then to make sure we come back to the country to serve um, when we are done studying. Um, just to give context here, um, this was posted on the website of the Republic of the Gambia in 2014. Um, he said, Professor Jame congratulated the victors for their achievement, noting that he was amazed by the level of talent exhibited during the contest and encouraged them to, make their to take their education seriously. Um, and to utilize their time wisely. He also advised them to be respectful, to be supportive to their parents, and as well as to safeguard their self-esteem, shy away from looking low upon other people and endeavor to serve as good role models for young people. Commenting on the reluctance of some parents in allowing their daughters to participate in the contest, President Jame blamed the ignorance for the practice the president described the contest as a means to empower girls to realize and exploit their potential for nation building, saying there is nothing unreligious about the initiative. Professor Jame said he will continue to patronize the initiative and on the other hand will not associate with anything that will breed immorality in society. Um, that is basically a sum up of what he said on that day. Um, I will ask the usher to take that document from you so that we can see um, where it was posted. But in the meantime, um, please continue telling us what else happened during that courtesy meeting. Um, after he advised us and told us to do um, to be better citizens and representatives of young people, um, then there was the ceremony of uh, gift giving. Again, on that occasion, as filmed on GRTS, there wasn't any talks about the process of the scholarship or um, what or who to get back to or when is the process of the scholarship going to start. Um, we did not ask either. So we were given the winners, me and the high school winner, we were given Mac laptops each, uh, an iPhone, a Mac, iPad, an iPhone 6, um, a box of a box with a coin goal with his head on it, printed on the coin goal, um, a cash prize, I think, yeah. And um, the other that I know I got as a winner with the other winner of the high of the high school, and the rest of the girls didn't get the laptop or the coin, but they did get the iPad and an amount of money as well. Yeah. Do you recall how much money was given? Two hundred thousand dollars. So from the document that you provided, right. it says that you and um, Awajame who was the, I believe she was one of the winners. She's the winner of the high school. High school. Yeah. 
receive $200,000 right. each, is that correct? Right. And then for the other um, winners, they received 100000 each. That's yeah, the cash about price. there, yeah. So after um, giving you these gifts, um, what else happened during that me meeting? Um, we dispersed, actually, after the whole ceremony. We took pictures. Um, we stood up. We took pictures with the gifts um, in our hands. And, yeah. We went home. Um, I believe this would be a good place to pause um, because it's time for the coffee break. Right. Um, Mr. Chairman, I hand over to you. Um, we will continue after the, the coffee break. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Council, and thank you very much, Ms. Jallo. We'll take a 30-minute break and come back at uh, 12 noon sharp. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.